Hey, y'all heard of the website Nexus Mods? I'm an old man, so I remember hanging out on it as the Elder Scrolls source, or TES source, which is what it went by until 2007. It began as a fan site for the Elder Scrolls III Morrowind, hosting music and artwork, and most importantly, mods for the game. As the life cycle of Morrowind ran its course, and Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion took its place, the site became TES Nexus and began to host mods for all of the Elder Scrolls games. As the site grew, they dropped the TES moniker, probably both for copyright reasons and wanting to expand, and became a general site for hosting mods of any game. And nowadays, it's the biggest mod site on the internet. I think it even gives Steam's mod servers a run for its money. Being a site that has existed on the internet for this long, Nexus Mods has naturally had its share of kerfuffles. Like, for example, the rather humorous situation regarding the Miranda butt shots from Mass Effect. In the Mass Effect games, the camera gratuitously fixates on Miranda's ass, and there's a mod on Nexus Mods to remove those camera angles from the cutscenes. Some people like this idea, Others said that this was Puritan SJW censorship, you know how this goes. But when EA released Mass Effect Legendary Edition, a remaster of the original trilogy, the butt angles are taken out right at the source. And also on Nexus Mods, you can find a mod to put them right back in. In fact, both mods were made by the same guy, the duality of man. Another notable example is Fallout the Frontier, which was a highly anticipated Fallout New Vegas mod worked on for years. When it finally dropped on Nexus Mods in 2021, it actually crashed the site due to its popularity. But after release, people began to realize there was some weird stuff in it. Most notably, you have the option to have sex with Death Claws and enslave a young girl named America, where she talks about how bad her feet smell. Yeesh. Fans began to dig into the people who made the mod and discovered that one of them has an alt account where they posted some rather extreme lolly shit. I don't mean borderline stuff, where you're watching a hentai and there's like a petite girl and it takes place in a high school, but everybody probably just hit the age of consent or something. This stuff was legitimately quite hard to stomach. As all this shit was going down, the contents of the modder's discord leaked, where the creators of the mod said that nothing was actually wrong with any of this, and it was all those pesky gamers' fault for everything collapsing in around them. But these are controversies by the creators of mods who use the Nexus Mods website. Nothing to do with the website itself. Well, while I was taking my post-Kenobi break from SFO, this bit of drama happened on Nexus Mods. The game Spider-Man Remastered hit PC, and it's got pride flags in it. A troll account on Nexus Mods, with the name Mike Hawk, uploaded a mod called Non-Newtonian New York. The background of the mod features Newton using a prism to split light rays into a rainbow, and another guy saying, dude, stop. The mod's description says, replaces Newton's prism artifacts with the stars and stripes. In case you don't get it, it takes pride flags and turns them into American flags. Of course, this went viral on Twitter, because Twitter is humanity's toilet. Somebody made a mod for Spider-Man PC to turn the game homophobic. What the fuck? What the actual fuck? This dude ended up locking his account over this. Lots of people here are trolling, though. Christina Tasty says, I don't get how this is homophobic. This just changes the date the game is set in from June 30th to July 1st, which is actually a pretty great response. However, I shit you not, what actually seems to be going on here is that the mod set the region of the game to the Middle East, where the pride flags aren't present. Hey, just like during the real life pride month. Anyway, for some reason, this was enough for Nexus mods to ban the Mike Hawk account, ban the person's real account, and all of their other mods, ban all re-uploads of the mod, and make this blog post on the topic. In regards to the replacement of pride flags in this game, or any game, our policy is thus. We are for inclusivity. We are for diversity. If we think someone is uploading a mod on our site with the intention to deliberately be against inclusivity or diversity, then we will take action against it. The same goes for people attempting to troll other users with mods deliberately to cause a rise. For our part, we will endeavor to do a better job of moderating our website. We aren't the authority on what users can and cannot mod. Us removing a mod only means it can't be found at Nexus Mods. Nothing more, nothing less. We also note that we are not the only site that has removed this mod from their platform. As a private business, we have a right to choose what content we do and do not want to host on our platform. Respect this right the same way you want respect for your rights. It's always great when progressives become the most ardent, rightist, libertarian capitalists as soon as they benefit from it, right? So let's actually consider the ethic that Nexus Mods has decided to stand by. We are for inclusivity. We are for diversity. If we think someone is uploading a mod on our site with the intent to be deliberately against inclusivity or diversity, then we will take action against it. Okay, that's probably why mods for the same game that turn pride flags into progress pride flags, or American flags into pride flags, are accepted. This idea only goes one way, in the name of diversity, inclusion, and equity. The owner of Nexus Mods, Robin Scott, started TES Source when he was just 15 years old. He basically stumbled into the job, because he just so happened to make a fan site that took off while he was in high school. And for a long time, he had that old internet ethic that a lot of us here presumably share. Live and let live. Don't get in my face, I won't get in yours. 
you know, respecting people's privacy. For example, Scott hosts an infrequent podcast where he talks about site updates and other site business. And during a 2012 episode, he had this to say about Puritans complaining about boob armor mods in the site. You might not be the type of person who likes the skimpy armor clothes, so like your chainmail bikinis and things like that. Um, and it's quite hard when there's 2,000 mods in, an, in the armor category to find the armor that you care about and not and remove or, or segment away all the chainmail bikinis and the skimpy clothes and things like that because they're all in the same category and i'm aware of that that's a big issue so focus our focus really is going to be on trying to allow you to customize your view of the site to only see the content that you actually care about so we have a lot less people whining like little bitches about the chainmail bikini stuff and all the stuff in between because you won't see it and if you do see it it's because you've chosen to see it and you've got no reason to complain then and then I can just be like well I don't give a crap you can shut up. That's a pretty reasonable take isn't it? Scott understands that boob armor mods are popular. He also understands that there's so many of them it's blocking people's ability to get other types of armor mods. He calls people complaining about seeing boobs whiners while also understanding the need for a way to filter out those types of mods on request. This isn't a progressive stance. This isn't pushing a specific type of politics. It's saying, fine, both pro-boob and anti-boob are welcome here. We'll just make it so that you only get the content that you want. In 2015, Scott gave an interview to Rock Paper Shotgun, where he describes his operating ethics. The context of this conversation is regarding the possibility of paid mods, something that Bethesda themselves was exploring at the time. Scott says, one of the main values of the Nexus sites has been respecting and supporting a mod's author right to choose if, how, and where they will distribute their mods, so long as it's legal. And I'm happy for you that you now have the option to earn some money for your hard work, but you still can't do that on the Nexus. And if you upload your files to Nexus Mods, you do it on the understanding that Nexus Mods is a completely free site for everyone. We can see a change in how Scott views things. In 2012 and 2015, his ethic is basically openness. Everyone can participate. If you don't like a type of content, don't engage with it. This is, ironically enough, actually diverse and inclusive. In 2022, he might talk about diversity and inclusivity, but he's actively making the choice to disallow one specific type of mod. What changed? During the 2020 election, Nexus Mods actually went through a bit of trouble with its users. A bunch of low effort political mods were being uploaded to the site as the election approached, and it was causing a bunch of flame wars in the comments. Scott's response was to ban all political mods until after the election was over, because he didn't have the time or the energy to deal with the escalating shit show. And to his credit, this ban seems to have gone both ways. There were mods for Fallout 4 that turned the Raiders into Antifa that were banned, just as there were mods for Skyrim that allowed you to arrest Donald Trump that were also banned. I mean, it still isn't great, at least not for me. No censorship is still better than censorship, but at least Scott banned all of it. At least everyone played by the same rules. But this is still part of a slow decay in his ethics. In 2012, the Nexus mod attitude was everyone is welcome, just chill out. In 2020, it was everyone's welcome unless you don't chill out. And now, in 2022, it's only the views I support are welcome. There has been a steady progression in how restrictive Scott's become over the years. And I have a hunch as to why. In 2021, the Nexus collections controversy happened. This is a huge fucking deep lore hole that I don't think is really worth diving into. So let me give you the short version of the story. In 2019, Scott and his team began working on a project called Nexus Collections. The idea was they wanted to make it easier for people to set up an extensively modded game and also share that specific mod setup around. So on the site, you could make what's called a collection. It's exactly as it sounds. You can put under one page a bunch of different mods so that every time you reinstall, or if anybody else wanted to run what you were running, rather than having to remember what each mod is and hunting down all the versions, it would all be saved as one collection. You could just go and grab it. Pretty convenient, right? However, the Nexus team realized that if modders ever deleted their mods for some reason, it would break all the collections their mod was featured in. So their solution was to make it so that nobody could ever delete mods off the site ever again. If you decided to nuke your account and remove all your mods, they wouldn't actually be deleted. The original page of the mods might say deleted, but any collection pages still referencing those mods would allow users to download them. This decision prompted a gigantic backlash from the community. So much so that the Nexus team actually ended up giving the modders a one month grace period to delete their mods from the site. Originally, there was no grace period at all, but ultimately the change still went forward. Today, nobody can delete their mods from the site. And if you miss the news and still want to, you're shit out of luck. While Nexus Mods is still the site for modding your games, their collections functionality is still kind of lackluster and isn't really used too often. 
For example, when people want a collection of mods for Skyrim, they don't use Nexus Collections. They use Wabajack, named after the staff of the same name from the same game. Wabajack is an automated mod installer. It automatically searches Nexus mods as well as other online mod locations and allows you to build a mod pack, just like Nexus Collections. But unlike Nexus Collections, Wabajack actually checks over the files of the mods and uses its knowledge of Skyrim's own files to determine whether or not the mods are actually compatible with each other. Anybody can slap random shit into a Nexus Collections list, but Wabajack actually tries to ensure that everything will work together. It's a neat little application. This is just my own intuition, but I've been around the block enough that I think I know what happened. It happened to Jack Conte over at Patreon. Having a total biscuit, too. And my video about it back in the day went viral. Everybody who has a cool new idea starts out like these guys. They're just a part of the community like any other user. They build a website or a YouTube show or a business, not necessarily hoping to become the king of the castle, but because as one of the many users on the ground, they see a niche and they want to fill it for the sake of everyone. And as they grow more successful and more of their fellow users start using their new innovation, they gradually stop being a fellow user. Do you think YouTubers become more or less in touch with their viewers the larger their channels grow? Jack Conte started Patreon with an idea and a passion, but do you think that's still really there, considering his behaviors in the past few years? Robin Scott started TES Source as a teenage fan of Elder Scrolls. Is he the same person? Obviously not. And some of that will be the natural process of maturity, but not all of it. People who start as fans and then suddenly have fans of their own. People who spend most of their formative years as consumers and then by a roll of the dice find themselves creators or curators instead. The attitude they take towards their growth often determines what they grow into down the line. And there's so many examples, Total Biscuit and Jack Conte are just a few, of people who started a big project, received significant pushback from their fans, and ended up lashing out or even hating them as a result. And while I haven't seen any definitive proof of this happening to Robin Scott, based on how he used to talk versus how he talks now, I have a feeling that it did. He and his team got royal shit on by the community for the Nexus Collection shit show. They only begrudgingly offered the one month grace period to allow people to take their mods off the site, and only after a ridiculous amount of backlash. And compared to his 2012 position from that podcast we listened to, or his 2015 position on the openness of the site, his current position for the past few years has been entirely, fuck you, if you don't like it, leave. And hey, I can respect that too. There are actually times where you are correct and your community is incorrect, and you need to stand your ground because you think it's the right thing to do. Popularity or democracy is not what determines the truth. But all of these people that I've been talking about, they think that this position means you have to go to war with your own audience. But that's just the ego talking. I know some of you have been listening to the past few minutes of this video and wondering if and when the side effect of my growth will happen to old Devo. Some of you act like it already has, simply because I don't acquiesce to your demands all the time. But the golden mean between just say and do whatever your audience says and burn everything down and make your audience hate you is stand by what you think is right, but don't hate your audience for disagreeing. It's humility. For example, I know how much at least some of you don't like Lilith or the Tubcast. Maybe you don't like some of her takes. And that's okay, because I don't agree with her all the time either. Maybe you just want to be rude because she's trans. And I'll never support that, but you do you. Even if I think you're absolutely retarded, or you're specifically here just to be a hateful dick, I generally don't ban anybody from my chat, unless they're being extremely disruptive to the show, or chasing away other chatters or something. If you are one of my viewers who specifically hates the Tubcast, or hates Lilith, I can disagree with you without going to war with you. I won't stop doing what I want to do simply based on your say-so, but I also won't think that you're a villain or, or not a real fan or something if you disagree with me. I think that's the difference between me and the examples that I've talked about today. And I think that's where Robin Scott is now. Again, no real proof, just a hunch and some of his circumstantial comments. It's not just his my way or the highway point of view. It's that if you choose highway, he thinks you're a bigot. Not wanting pride flags in Spider-Man is just as stupid as wanting them. In the day, just a flag, who cares? Wanting them removed is kind of petty, but so is flying them in the first place. A modder taking pride flags down is no more or less homophobic than what a corporation does at the end of June. In fact, I know you expected this video to be about the flag itself instead of Nexus mods as a site, but I'm actually saving that pride flag topic for another time. In fact, maybe they'll even do it tomorrow. So, uh, I'll see you then.